At the end of my last video about the Snapmaker where I installed the Z extension arm, I mentioned having to level the bed and do some test prints. I had a few people on Facebook ask me about my bed leveling process and getting prints to stick, so that's what we're going to take a look at today. It's rare that I have to re-level the bed on my Snapmaker for 3D printing. In fact, I only really have to do it whenever I update the firmware, which only happens every few months if I swap out the heads or if I install the Z-axis extension arm. But here's how I go about leveling the bed. The process is pretty simple, but it's not like most other 3D printers. With a lot of 3D printers, the bed is mounted on screws with springs, which you can turn to move the corners of the bed up and down to meet the height of the nozzle. On the Snapmaker, it's the other way around. The bed is screwed down and fixed solid. So instead of moving the bed up and down to meet the nozzle, we move the nozzle up and down to meet the bed. The first step, and this is pretty common to all printers, is to clean the build plate. I use a 50-50 isopropyl alcohol and water mix in a spray bottle. I give it a good squirt and then wipe it down with a paper towel. This gets rid of any dust or mess that's worked its way onto the bed. Step two is the leveling process itself. For this, we need a small strip of paper. I just cut a piece off a sheet of regular laser copier paper, and then in settings on the Snapmaker menu, we choose calibration. The printer will begin by homing itself. By default, with a new printer or when you install firmware, there's a pretty big gap between the bed and the nozzle. So initially, we need big nozzle movements. After homing, you can see that there are four squares on the LCD numbered one to four. These represent the four corners of the build plate. I tap the box for number one, and you can see that the paper moves freely because there's such a big gap. I choose half millimeter increments here and then move the nozzle down until the paper is trapped and doesn't move. Then I change the increments to 0.2 millimeters and move the nozzle up until the paper moves freely again. Finally, I go down to 0.05 millimeter increments and tap it down until I can just pull and push the paper underneath it with little resistance. If you can pull it but not push, then you've probably gone a little too low. The goal here is to get the nozzle at all four corners equal distance from the bed. So I do the same process on each of the other three corners. Then for a good measure, I repeat the process on all four corners just to feel I have consistent resistance between them. Then we're done. Just hit save and the printer will once again home itself. So that's it, you're leveled, all done, right? Just load in some filament, fire up a print, and... Oh. This is the point at which many people might take to Facebook groups and ask what they should apply to their bed to make prints stick, but you don't need to do any of that. All we've done here is to make sure that the nozzle is the same distance from the bed at all four corners. We haven't actually got it the right distance from the bed. The problem is the paper method isn't super reliable because different paper has different thicknesses and there's no standard around the world. And when you're dealing with layer heights potentially as low as a tenth of a millimeter, that can make a big difference. Plus there are other things to consider like the material you're using. PLA generally tends to want to be squished down on the bed a little more than PETG. If you try to print PETG when your printer's level for PLA, you might not be able to pull the print up without tearing your bed. And then there's the fact that the Snapmaker isn't up to temperature when you're leveling it, so you're not taking things like thermal expansion into account. So we have to keep tweaking it. But because we've used the paper to get the nozzle the same distance from the bed at all four corners, it means we can move the nozzle up and down on each of the four corners the same distance, and we know that they're all still parallel to the bed. The process begins again. We go into calibration, go to corner one, knock it down 0.05 millimeters, go to corner two, knock that one down, then corners three and four, save and try another print. Then rinse and repeat until your filament sticks to the bed with no issues and your print completes successfully. There is one potential issue that you might run into using this method and that's where your print looks like it's sticking but then after it's gone around printing for a while on the first layer, previously laid down filament starts to lift completely off the bed. This is a combination of two things. First, your nozzle is too close to the bed, so as filament is being laid down, it's splurging out the sides, putting pressure on the surrounding filament and causing it to lift off the bed. The second is the reason why you've had to get your nozzle this close in the first place to be able to get anything to stick at all, and that's that you're trying to print the first layer too quickly. With small models, especially intricate ones with lots of twists and turns, you may need to print that first layer very, very slowly, and that's true with any printer. It's not uncommon that you might need to slow down to 15 or even 10 millimeters per second for that first layer for intricately detailed objects. 
So if you run into the problem where the nozzle is too close, just back it off a bit on all four corners, slow down the print speed or knock up the temperature for the first layer, and then re-level the bed with the slower speed. Once you've got G-code for a good model that prints well on the first layer, save it. That way, if you ever need to re-level in the future, you have a model that you know prints well and you can tell when you've leveled properly again in the future. So this is the process that I use for leveling the Snapmaker bed. It can seem a little tedious at first with all the rinsing and repeating, but once you get used to it and everything's dialed in perfectly, you rarely have to do it again, especially if you're always using the same type of filament, so it's worth doing well. Plus, it means I never have to deal with the mess of glue sticks or hairspray or the million other things people recommend to try and get prints to stick to their bed. When you level it right, it just sticks. Hopefully showing you my process for leveling the Snapmaker will help you with leveling yours, and any first layer sticking issues you might have had. For the Snapmaker 2, the leveling process is a little different. I haven't received one yet, so I can't show you that. When it does arrive though, if people are interested in seeing that, I'll make a video on leveling that one too. Let me know down below if that's what you want to see. That's all for now. My next video probably won't be about the Snapmaker. In fact, it almost certainly won't be about the Snapmaker, but it may still be 3D printing related. I've been designing a teleprompter recently for my camera and after posting a few photos on Facebook I had quite a few people asking me about it so I'll put something together about my design and printing process for that and I'll probably stick the files up for download on Thingiverse or somewhere once I'm totally happy with it. If you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more videos about the Snapmaker, 3D printing, photography and whatever else I feel like doing. If you have any questions about leveling the Snapmaker or need some troubleshooting help, drop them down in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.